Hello friends, I'm Becca Wildsmith and I'm with Tim Wildsmith and we're back answering your questions. More questions. <laughs> Okay, so we're back with the second of these videos, the Ask Me Anything video series. I asked for the second anniversary of Bible Review Blog for you, the viewers, to submit questions. You could ask me anything. Submitted so many questions. Entirely too many, but I love it. <laughs> you submitted so many questions that we're splitting it up into three different videos. My wife, Becca, is here to ask your questions. We already did one video where we talked about Bible reviewing and the mm -hmm. world of Bible Review Blog. And now in this video, we're going to answer questions that are more personal, just about my yeah. personal story in my life. Yeah. You Sound want to fun? jump in? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. So, from Joshua Henderson. Okay. Hi, Out Joshua. Hi, Joshua. Outside of the Bible, what has been the most formative book for your faith? That's a really, a really great question. The first one that comes to mind is uh, The Spirit of the Disciplines by Dallas mm -hmm. Willard. It's a book that I read first uh, probably five or six years ago, and it's really about how do we put into practice the things that de Jesus taught us? How do we actually live the way Jesus lived and the way Jesus taught us to live. A real practical book um, about, about spiritual disciplines and really following Jesus. I, I loved that book and I've read it multiple times. I also talk a lot about a book called Sacred Rhythms by Ruth Haley Barton. And it's um, it was, a again, I read that four or five years ago for the first time and kind of just floored me with some of the insight and wisdom that she has, particularly when it comes to rest and mm -hmm. Sabbath. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, b both of those books are kind of in the vein of like living out your faith. Um, but those two books are the first two that come to mind. I could, I could think about some C.S. Lewis or um, things like that, but those two are the, the first two that come to mind. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Um, so Mike Howard sent in two questions that are pretty similar. I'm going to okay. ask them in two parts. So okay. are you also a book lover? Mm -hmm. And if so, what do you like to read and which authors? Yes, I am a big avid reader. I have been since I was a little kid. Believe it or not, I started reading John Grisham novels when I was like nine or ten. I loved Man, those books. Yeah, those I, I read books. that sort of stuff. And so I, I like things uh, across the spectrum. I really like literary fiction. So a lot of the books that you see that like win the Pulitzer Prize and things like that, yeah, I, I, I love books too. like that. One of my favorite authors is Colin McCann. I've, I've read everything that he's written. And my favorite is Let the Great World Spin. It's a beautiful novel. I love Michael Chabon. I love uh, Jess Walter. I just read his book called The Cold Millions mm -hmm. from a couple of years ago, which was fantastic. I've recently... You have a, some first editions, too. Like I you do. You have a collection I, of some first I do, editions. I do have some first and... editions from different people that are mm -hmm. kind of like, you know, cool books, like, you know, Pulitzer Prize winning books or award winning books. I, I read a lot now because I started plugging my phone in in a different room in the house. And so I read every night when I get in bed. I'm currently, I'm doing Harry Potter, the Harry Potter series. I've never mm -hmm. done that before. Um, I've read, I like to read memoirs from people, so actors and musicians and politicians and things like that. Um, so I, I like to read that, and I, I read a lot of like theology from people like N.T. Wright and things like that. So I like to mix it up a little bit. Um, but yeah, I do, I do, I read quite a bit, Mike. I like it. Mike also wants to know, are you a sports fan? And if so, what team do you root for? Big sports fan across the board. I was born, my parents were born in Birmingham, Alabama. They went to the University of Alabama, so I was born and raised in a crim tide. Crimson Tide family. <laughs> Becca married into it. So really, that's probably the, the biggest team that we root for in general. It's been a good a good 10 years to be an Alabama fan. I'm, I'm, I root for the teams so I can eat the tailgating food. We do have a lot of good tailgates. Those little smokies at my with parents the little house. crescent rolls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, I grew up playing baseball. I love baseball. Um, probably the Braves are like my, my favorite team from like being a kid. I, I was a huge Ryan Sandberg fan, a Chicago Cubs second baseman when I was a kid. For some reason, I gravitated towards him. But I don't really have sport, pro sports teams that I like am allegiant to, but I do, I do watch. And, and golf. Had, golf is probably the one I watch the most. I play a lot of golf with my dad, mm -hmm. and I love to watch golf. So I'm, when I'm on YouTube, I'm watching golf videos, not Bible videos for the That's most true. part. I watch a lot of golf videos on YouTube. There's and you just videos. shared about your experience at the Masters. Yeah, so I just did a video recently about going to the Masters with my dad, which was like a lifelong dream for both of us. So yeah. that was really cool. Yeah, yeah. That. He'll link that one. I'll make oh, yeah. sure he does. Yep. Um, okay, lots of questions about your tattoos, your art. Yes. Um, the meanings, how many do you have, and any bad reactions? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so a lot of people have asked about my tattoos and wanted to hear stories about my tattoos. So I do have... Full sleeve tattoos. I got my first tattoo when I was 18 years old. It's this little cross, and it has Chinese characters that I think says "worshipper." We think, which is um, the the, the internet was not the internet was not as great back in the year 2000 as it is now. But um, I got this tattoo kind of 18 three days after my birthday. 
rebellious. I was not going to tell my parents about it because I could hide it. Um, and then I felt really guilty. So like three days in, I told my parents about it. They were, as you might expect, mortified. Um, back then, I was the only person I knew. Like I went to a high school of like 2,000 people, and I think two or three people had tattoos. And then I finished my sleeves, uh, my full sleeves, when I was 29. So over the course of 11 years, I continued to get tattoos. And they all have some sort of personal, family, spiritual significance. This one up here is like a big cityscape both in black and gray and full color, which kind of has some personal, uh, emotional, spiritual uh, significance to me. On my right arm down here, I have our family crest, which is a blue coat of arms with sheep. And my dad's favorite saying is, life is a journey is on there. There's also the, the logo to the 1982 World's Fair that I went to in the womb. So that's kind of for my mom. My left arm is some Japanese-style clouds and lightning bolts. My dad was born in Japan on a military base. Um, and then it's a heart here that says love never fails. And then a tree of life from Revelation in there. Um, on my ring finger, I have a B, which stands for Becca. This girl. That's Becca. Um, I have a couple of like traditional swallows, birds on my chest. I have a very large portrait of the Last Supper of Christ on my back, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a, a peculiar tattoo when you really look at it. <laughs> You don't. You never see it. I see it every day. <laughs> and then, um, and then on my leg, my most recent tattoo, I have a very large tattoo of a bear on my leg, and it has. It's beautiful. It's beautiful, and it has it's some really very, beautiful. very meaningful. Uh, it means stuff. a lot to me, and, and a good story for me. Yeah. Um, that it's just about my life, and and I have a good friend who's a tattoo artist here in town. So yes, I, I have a lot of tattoos. I love tattoos. Um, What's been the reaction to your tattoos? Um, I live in the world of like evangelical Christianity in America. I grew up in that world. So even from when I was 18 and I got a tattoo, I remember one of the moms in the youth group didn't think I should be allowed to lead worship because I got a tattoo. Um, when I got a job as a youth pastor about eight or nine years ago, one family left the church because they did not want their kids to be taught by someone with tattoos because they had a problem with it. Um, those are obviously painful experiences. Um, I've had a lot of comments over the years about my tattoos, um, a lot of criticism, um, you'd be surprised, I mean, I tell you about it, how many comments I delete on this YouTube channel from people in general who are just picking fights with people or, or, or coming in and, and saying ugly things about the Bible or, or, or hating on Christianity in general. But but the, the vast majority of the comments I have to delete are people who um, just say unkind things about my tattoos, tell me that I'm disgusting and that I clearly don't follow the Bible because I have tattoos. Um and so in response to all of that, I created a video a few months ago that just says, what does the Bible say about tattoos? And I kind of just look, because a lot of people say you shouldn't have tattoos because the Bible says so. But when I try to engage them, they don't really know what the Bible says about tattoos. And so I recognize that that's a, a subject that people can disagree about. But I wanted to create a video to answer that question and kind of share my thoughts and my perspectives on it. Um, and and just, just so I could point point people to a certain place if they if they do say that. But yeah, it's... It's something, you know, uh, soft art. You're also art. in like an art and creative world. You're, sure. You write music and, yeah. you know, it's just, I think it's a beautiful expression of storytelling. Thank and like you. you said, you know, sharing your heart and different things you want to remember and have opportunities to talk about. So, I mean, you've had opportunities to talk about your faith when people comment on your tattoos. Yeah. So. I don't, I don't, I don't, I try not to have too soft, literally skin about, uh, about, about the tattoos, but at this point, I've had tattoos for much longer than I've not had tattoos, yeah. and so. And you know, um, for a guy that doesn't love shots, <laughs> I don't know how he for hours would lay with someone. It really hurts. People ask if it hurts. Yes. <sighs> All right. Getting tattoos hurts. Um, will you link that video as well? The yes, tattoo video. Absolutely. Great. Okay. So this question is from Jonathan. Okay. Is this your friend Jonathan? Yep, with, Jonathan Resmini, Father with, Jonathan. Uh, hey, buddy. The sweet dog. Yeah, Juniper. Juniper. Okay. Yes. Um, blind dog? Blind, blind and, and deaf. deaf. Yeah, she's amazing. And she's the most beautiful dog. Okay. So he asked, outside of Bible reviews, what is your favorite way to spend your time? What do you do? Where do you go uh, when you need a break? Man, um, my most favorite thing to do when I'm not working, when I'm not doing Bible reviews, is to hang out with this girl right here. That's so sweet and, and so not true. a line. She's my best friend. We, we love we, spending time. We love it. hanging out together, going on walks. We really love to to sit on the couch and watch TV together. I'm a bit of a cinephile. I yes. love movies. Yeah, love um, movies. I I go to the movie theater by my, I'm that person who goes to the movie theater by myself when I have time and see a movie. When the Oscars come around, I see every single Oscar nominated. He makes film. us have an Oscar party every year too. I'm like an <laughs> introvert. Would never leave my house. Would never see another person if it was okay. Yeah. With the world, and you're like, let's invite people over to our house every year. We do and watch the. 
watch awesome. the Oscars. It's always fun. It is always um, fun. I mentioned that I play golf with my dad a lot. I really love to play golf. I, mm-hmm. I, in a former life, I was a professional musician, so I love to, and I'm actually getting ready to release some new music. So I love to write music and play music. That's a, that's a big thing. But yeah, just um, we love to travel. Like yeah. for you know, we're taking a big trip this summer, and we're excited about that. So whenever we get to travel together and be together, we we love. You're that a as huge well. reader too. I, love I to often read. find you reading, drinking a cup of coffee, and yeah. And yeah. yeah. Um, great question, Jonathan. All right. This is from Logan Murray. Okay. What denomination are you? Oh, so we currently are the worship leaders on staff at a Baptist church here in Nashville. Um, Southern Baptist, yes, but, but not like, not like all the way, I guess. Um, we have been, I was on staff at a Southern Baptist church. I was on staff at an Acts 29 church. I was on staff at at an evangelical free, free church. What I'm trying to say is, not really one specific denomination. You're like a Heinz 57. I am. I'm a little bit of a mutt. You know, like my parents, we moved around a lot. My dad was a corporate executive. And whenever we landed in a new town, they would make it a priority to find a local church that, you know, preached the Bible and had good ministries for me and my sister, whatever age we were. And so Mm -hmm. we were Presbyterian, non-denominational, evangelical free, Baptist. So I I, I speak a little bit of all that. I think that that's part of the reason why a lot of people comment that they appreciate that my channel is pretty equitable and hospitable to people from different denominations. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of Catholic people say, hey, thanks for reviewing Catholic Bibles and being so open. Because a lot of times they feel like evangelical Christians, you know, say bad things about them. But I kind of have this perspective where we, a lot of people see things slightly differently in different denominations and different uh, viewpoints in Christianity. But we can all find a place to come together yeah. and, and, and have good conversation and have meaningful disagreements sometimes. Yeah. And so, yeah, I don't really... Um, see myself as one specific Christian denomination. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so this is sort of a two-part question. Okay. So um, from This is a Sign to Stay Alive okay. asked, what kind of music do you like in terms of genre and artists? Okay. We also had a question from O'Brien, who inspired you growing up? Favorite artist, best artist. So maybe that, I don't know if that's musical or fine art, but... Okay. Those are some questions. So what kind of music do you like? Uh Genres and artists. Okay. And maybe what kind of fine art do you like? Okay. So music, I mean, I'm like a kid from, I grew up in the 90s. So like I love like 90s alternative rock. My favorite bands back in the day were like Third Eye Blind and Matchbox 20 and (laughs) even like Hootie and the Blowfish. Like the Hootie and the Blowfish was the first CD I ever bought. That that CD cracked a review. Hold my hair. Uh, That was kind of alt country. Now I love alt country. I love... That's what Hootie does now. (laughs) Yeah. I I love uh, Jason Isbell. I love... Yeah, Coldplay, John. I've, Mayer, I've seen Coldplay a bunch of times in YouTube, concert. Wilco, um, love Wilco. Um, I, I like a, a lot of different things. I'm not into country music. We live in Nashville, but I, I really don't listen to country music. But it's like, kind of like acoustic alt rock, alt alt country. Um, I like a lot of. Have I, been listening? I listen I, right now. I listen to a lot of worship music. Like there's mm-hmm. so many great worship bands out there. So I listen. Mm-hmm. To a lot of that. As far as art goes, my favorite artist by far is a, is a, a woman named Becca Wildsmith. <laughs> Ever heard of her? You need to go to my wife's website, BeccaWildsmith.com, and see all of her. She does murals and design, but she also does incredible abstract art that I absolutely love. So, Thank you. So, super talented. I love, I've mentioned in the other video, Makoto Fujimura, who's a Japanese-American artist who does abstract art as well. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as, like... Being married to an artist, I have literally traveled all over the world, and we go to art museums. Like we've been to all of you the big Rembrandt. art museums. Rembrandt back here, the Return of the Prodigal Son. I love Rembrandt, love and Van I Gogh. love Van Gogh. Yeah. Uh, we went to the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam, and I was blown away. Like I loved, yeah. I loved. So Rembrandt and Van Gogh were probably you my like two Rothko? favorite. Like I love Rothko. Rothko, 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 Rothko some modern art. I'm looking at some paintings over in the corner that you have. They're kind of some Rothko esque. Yeah, Rothko esque. Yeah. So yeah, um, love music, love art. Yep. Yeah, that's good. I like it. I like all those things too. Okay. Last one. It's another two part question. We got kind of similar questions. Um, Joey asked, how did you come to Christ? Seven Dory asked, what is your testimony? So can you share a little bit about how you became a follower of Jesus? Yeah. So I I grew up in a Christian household. My parents, you know, I'm so grateful for that. My, my, I, you know, as I said earlier, my parents, we were always in church. We were those people who we went on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and um, I was in this program called Awana when I was a kid, so I learned a lot of what I know about the Bible now when I was a kid. But we lived in Indianapolis, Indiana when I was in like first and second grade, and I remember like vividly still to this day, like there was a guest preacher 
who um, did kind of a, a classic Baptist altar call at the end. And I just looked up at my mom and was like, hey, I, I think I want to do this. And so I went down and I, I prayed that prayer. I got baptized at the next Sunday night service and gave my life to Jesus. And um, I think my testimony is is that that it's it's a continual lifelong decision to choose Jesus and to mm-hmm. choose to follow Jesus. That it's not a necessarily a moment of conversion, but a, a long life obedience in the same a direction. long obedience in the same direction, a lifetime commitment. And there have certainly been days and weeks and even years where I, I didn't choose Jesus all the time. Um, but I, my my phrase that my kids in my youth group heard me say time and time again was, "Life with Jesus is better than life without Jesus," and that's because. I actually, it's not a line. I actually believe that, and I, I kind of know it from experience. And so um, what I have found through uh, my, my life in the church, my, my studies in seminary, and in, in the work that I've done in ministry is that there is something real and deep and true and good about uh, who God is and what He's done for us in and through Jesus, and that giving our lives to that is so worth it. And so it's a daily choice that I make. My testimony is that I'm an ongoing story, but I am, I'm a faithful follower of Jesus. And, and that looks different for me today than it did five years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Um, but I'm, I'm on that journey. I shared about the tattoo, life is a journey. And I feel like it's more about the journey than the destination. And um, I'm thankful to have a wife who is on that same page with me and that we can grow together and do ministry together and so it's a it's a huge huge part of my life and part of the reason why i do bible review blog is because um the bible is at the center of what i know to be true about jesus and what i've experienced um about his love for me and um and his love for the world and so i want to help people in a small way just connect with the bible because i think the bible is is a really great entry point to um finding an abundant life in christ Mm -hmm. so yeah that's good yeah cheers to two years that's it cheers to two years Thank you so much for, for watching. Sending in the questions. They were awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. There's one more video coming in this series with some more questions mm-hmm. that you asked. So we really appreciate that. Again, yeah. anything I mentioned in this video, I'll put some links in the description. You can always hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, find me and Becca on Instagram and Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. This was fun. We'll see you next time. See you next time.